I've been using macOS for some time now and it's almost embarrassing for me to admit that I haven't used these features sooner. So with this video, I'm hoping to make you guys take advantage of these tips a lot sooner than I did. The first is to take advantage of keyboard shortcuts. Now these are present throughout macOS. Every app will have keyboard shortcuts and I'm not saying to learn and study up, but just get into the habit of starting to use these shortcuts. I'll use keyboard shortcuts in all my frequently used apps like Lightroom, DaVinci Resolve, and even my browser. Just hitting Command T is just a whole lot more intuitive and quicker and it kind of all becomes second nature. Once you learn the commands, once you start getting into the habit of it, it allows for more of a flow when you're using the software because all the software and all the computers are all kind of just an extension of us. So whatever you're trying to do, it just allows you to do it a lot faster. A really good app to learn all these keyboard shortcuts is Key Clue. All you gotta do is double tap command and hold it and then it'll pop up a bunch of little shortcuts for whatever app you're using. I think this makes it really intuitive and very easy to learn everything and start getting into the habit of using these shortcuts. Up next is to seriously utilize virtual desktops. This is something I was late to the game with. You know what, all these I was kind of late to the game with. Virtual desktops has been a feature in Mac OS for a while now. Windows has it as well, Linux. These are kind of commonplace in OSs nowadays. If you have a MacBook though, the feature is way better because all you gotta do is swipe with your fingers and you're on your next desktop. I only really started using virtual desktops earlier this year. As I edit more videos, as I make more of these YouTube videos, I'll edit in DaVinci Resolve and then I'll swipe and have my Notion page up on another desktop with all my notes that I would need or maybe even finders open, I could drag footage in directly from there. It just makes it a whole lot quicker. So if you have a specific workflow with multiple apps, maybe you want Spotify open, you can just swipe through multiple desktops and you can open as many as you want. I mean, test the limits and let me know in the comments below, but I think you could open as many as you want. You can have two, three, four virtual desktops open all running different apps and windows depending on whatever your needs are for, for whatever project you're working on. Pair virtual desktop with stage manager and then you're really cooking, uh, we're not gonna be able to stop you. If you use virtual desktops with stage manager, you might quite literally be unstoppable. Next up is quick actions, more specifically on photos. As a photographer, this could have saved me countless amounts of time if I would have known about this sooner. But when you right click an image, you have the ability to convert it into a PDF or even turn it into a JPEG or a PNG depending on what you wanna use it for. The fact that's built right into Mac OS saves a whole lot of time, but that's not the only thing it could do. It could actually even remove the background from any image you want. And it does it with surprisingly good accuracy. Of course, it doesn't hurt to bring it into Photoshop because the edges normally do need to be cleaned up. For isolating a subject from an image, it does a damn good job and it reduces the amount of time and you bring it into Photoshop and manually cutting out whatever subject of that photo. The fact that the Mac can do this with the click of a button is very impressive and saves a lot of time. The next tip to get the most out of your Mac is to reduce clutter and simply take care of it. Don't keep every app in your dock. Make the app earn a spot on the dock. Don't keep useless files lying around. Archive old files that you may want to keep on an external hard drive. This will all just allow you to get the most out of your Mac by keeping it clean and keeping your workspace clean. A great way to keep it clean and maintain performance of your Mac is with today's sponsor, Clean My Mac. Clean My Mac is a one-stop solution for caring for your Mac. You can easily clean up junk files, which I do about once every month. It'll also help you find duplicate files so that you could get rid of them and basically just free up a bunch of space that's just wasted for no reason. In addition to being able to scan and remove malware, there's two new features that Clean My Mac has that allow you to further clean up your digital life. The first is space lines. This allows you to get a visual representation of what's taking up space. The reason I love this is because we're visual creatures. That's the reason we're watching videos. It really allows you to dig in and see a visual representation of what's really taking up your space and where it's being taken up. Then you can go in, delete them or archive them, whatever you wanna do with those files. The other new feature is cloud cleanup which sounds exactly like what it does. It supports the big three providers, iCloud, Google Drive, and OneDrive, and allows you to clean up large files and brings the Space Lens feature directly to your cloud drive. It's a convenient one-app solution to reducing clutter, getting rid of junk, and just overall maintaining the performance of your Mac. It's become one of my must-have apps on my Mac, and from now until December 1st, you could get 30% off Clean My Mac by using the link in the description. You can take advantage of that and you help out the channel. Thanks to Clean My Mac for sponsoring this video and back to the video. All right, next tip involves what I like to call the MacBook's magic key. This is a key I've ignored for the majority of my MacBook career. That doesn't make any sense. For the countless years I've used Mac OS, I've not used this one key and that's a dictation key. I feel like this is something Apple doesn't give themselves enough credit for and I haven't really heard many people talk about it, but ever since I started using it this year to write out my notes for these videos actually, it has changed the way I interact with typing on my MacBook. The reason why I like the dictation feature in Mac OS, and I'm not talking about Siri because Siri actually sucks, but the dictation is very accurate and it's almost like you're having a conversation 
with your MacBook. So you could talk naturally, get your thoughts out on paper. For these videos, that's basically what I do. I just kind of jot down my notes, talk to it, thinking out loud, and it makes it type a lot quicker than if I was using my keyboard. So that's really what I like about it. You'll still need your keyboard. I'm not saying to use this everywhere. Like you don't wanna use this for Google searches, but if you're a student and you have essays or assignments, try using it to write your documents and see how much better it is than typing with your slow fingers. <laughs> because typing with fingers, is that, like typing is almost outdated now. If you're like me, I just use it to write notes and plan out these videos. So if you have projects to plan out, try that out too. Just talk to your computer. I know it's like, kind of weird because we're used to interacting with the keyboard, but I'm telling you, keyboards feel outdated. Like I'll lay back like this and I'll just talk to my computer and it'll just write everything for me and I barely have to correct it. So look, take my word for it, try it out. It's a pretty cool feature. Next tip is to expand your resolution. Now, if you've dug around in the settings a bit, you probably already know this one, but I feel like when you expand your resolution, increasing your screen real estate, I think this is an overall increase in functionality for your Mac and especially if you're someone that uses multiple apps and windows. To change your resolution scaling, all you do is go to displays and then select more space. But if you're feeling real crazy, if you've got a couple screws loose, you hold down your option key, click more space, and that will unlock every single compatible resolution with your Mac, including the native resolution. Increasing the resolution basically scales everything down. So icons will look smaller, windows will look smaller. You basically get a little bit more screen real estate and it almost makes the screen feel a lot bigger. It's kind of just personal preference if you want more space, less space. Let me know in the comments below what you do, especially if you pick the native resolution. For you crazy guys that are picking the native resolution of your MacBook, please let me know because you're a crazy son of a The last tip to getting the most out of your Mac is to back up your whole entire computer to an external drive. The reason I'm including time machine backups in this video is because I think it's an integral part in using Mac OS. Just the fact you can go back in time and pull out older versions of files directly from your Mac is such a great feature that I feel like isn't appreciated enough. Backing up your whole Mac to an external drive just helps remove the problem that there would possibly be a problem. If you have it all backed up, you have nothing to worry about. If you mess something up, you have a copy of that computer on an external drive. If it gets stolen, God forbid, you have a backup. You have everything there. You have all any important files, any files you would depend on, any work files, any project files, you basically have a complete copy of the device. I think regularly backing up your Mac helps you get the most out of your Mac because now you're removing any guesswork that something might corrupt, something might get deleted, something might get lost. You have your back covered and I think that's one of the most important things in a digital age. So that basically wraps up the video. Those are seven tips I use basically every day to get the most out of my Mac. Let me know in the comments if there's any tips I missed. I'm sure there are, but share them with all of us because I'm willing to learn. I'm sure everybody else would love to hear more tips. So let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.